Travis. Travis asks, um, going through the course, and it's clear that vocal cry mode is the bomb. Yeah. I have gone to the primitive acoustic mode section, and I learned about sob mode. Okay? And it's unclear if they are the same thing. This is a great question. This is compounded by the assertion you don't really use sob in training, whereas you regularly refer to using cry mode in training. Can you please clarify? All right. Voice coaches, I want you to watch as we do this. One thing that I want you to a, a witness that's happening is students don't really understand the backstory and the technique and things oftentimes. So you have to read a question or take a concern and and, and sort of tra retranslate it. You have, you have to decrypt it. A good voice coach will be able to hear their question and understand what the real question is. Even though the student isn't asking it properly, you sort of know what they're hitting at. You know what what they're getting at. So it's important that when this happens, such as Travis, although Travis he did a nice job on this actually, um, um, that, that, that you turn around to the student and you say, okay, what I think I understand what you're concerned about is in the book, in the course, when we talk about physical modes, and physical modes are a set of physical laryngeal positions that are unique that create a certain a certain sound color that that are that are part of human phonation okay uh, to give you an example of a physical mode i'm using one of them right now it's called speech speech mode the way the muscles the musculature the, the tendons the ligaments and the and the phonetics the vowels and the consonants are rolling out of my mouth, the way I'm communicating and the way the musculature is responding inside right now is what we need for speech mode, okay? To speak, to speak. On the other hand, when we sing, we don't sing with speech mode configuration, all right? We sing with other more exotic configurations, and that's one of the points for vocal training, is it helps people learn how to build a new set of motor skills and strength and coordination that they don't really have that isn't speech. We live with speech every day. Generally speaking, people without training try to use speech mode at singing, and it doesn't work. Why? Because you have complex patterns and melodies at really high frequencies, and that's not where speech lives. You try to take speech physical mode configuration, and you get it up above the vocal break onto an A4 and high stuff. You try to articulate screams and singing nice and vibrato and everything else that's involved in the art of singing inside the physical mode of speech mode. It isn't going to work. That's part of the problem. That's why we have studios like this and voice coaches. So what we do is we run students through different patterns and workouts and onsets and things. It's all in my course and my book that teach you how to train, but that's also developing these more exotic modes, okay? That's the backstory. In order for me to answer Travis's question, I first have to teach you or remind you of what physical modes are. Otherwise, you wouldn't understand the question. The question wouldn't make any sense. It would have no context, all right? All right, so his question basically is, Robert, I noticed that in the book and in the course, you don't advocate, you don't advocate sob mode. There's a, one of these physical modes that's called sob. This is sob mode. I'm in sob mode right now. You can tell I'm really sobby. It's very sobby, okay? Okay, now to make this sound color, my larynx is lowered and other things have happened and I'm in sob mode. All right, so I'm sob, okay? And, and then... Travis says, but but you don't advocate sob mode, and then you turn around in more recent videos, you're advocating cry vocal mode. Oh, this is cry mode. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
You notice I would never speak like this, but I could say like this. All right? Maybe not a great example, but you notice it's definitely not speech mode, and it's not sob mode either. All right? We've got three different physical modes, speech, sob, and cry. Well, since crying and sobbing in the language sort of mean the same thing, that's creating confusion for the student. Don't sob, but cry. But as far as I know, sobbing and crying sort of means the same thing, so I'm confused. That's what Travis is saying. Voice coaches, that's the thing you gotta, you got to pick up and recognize quickly. All right, Travis, your answer. Four or five years ago, when I started writing the book and doing the course, um, uh, I made the statement that sob mode had little value in singing. Okay? And um, it stands. It's still true, in my opinion. Somebody might want to argue with me. Somebody might want to say, well, it's all, I sing like this all day long, and I can use this sound color all day long. And Fine. Have fun with that. I don't really advocate sob mode for singing, okay? Not typically. Um, but recently, in updated content, I've become a big, big, big advocate of cry vocal mode. And cry vocal mode is characterized by elongation of the vocal folds, which creates hyperreduction, medial compression, which increases increases the surface area or the contact surface area of the vocal folds which if you then pull that chest musculature up into your head voice it's one of the things that makes high notes above the vocal break sound chesty and belty having good medial compression all right and three cry vocal mode removes this all pharyngeal constriction cry vocal mode gives you hyperreduction cry vocal mode maintains good chest voice musculature at on high notes for belting and cry vocal mode removes the pushing and the choking and the squeezing last time i checked sign me up for that sign me up for that and it is flat out flat out the most significant thing that i've sort of stumbled upon learned about applied to my own singing and my teaching and all my students and and teachers it's the it's the it's the most profound discovery to become a better singer in training since the dampen and release onset <laughs> and the attack and release onset all right cry vocal mode really super important it's going to transform radically transform your singing forever all right also we have two onsets in the program the dampen and release onset onsets that pop off of plosives and glottal attacks that go into uh straight into vowels all right they also can build great, great strength and, and, ha and, and take a student to a whole new level quickly. All right? So, Travis, yeah, sob and cry sort of mean the same thing in the language of English. All right? But in the talk track and the language of vocal technique, if we're talking about physical vocal modes as students and teachers, it's not... The context is different, all right? We're not talking about linguistics. We're talking about talk track terms in vocal technique, in books and courses and things. So they're different. Cry mode, sob mode are different. You heard the differences. I don't recommend sob mode. I do recommend singing through cry vocal mode for sure. All right? I hope that answers your question. Next, we will get to the microphones. I promise you guys. I'm going to wait for the last 15 minutes for that. <laughs> 